Good morning. Good morning. And I give a warm good morning to all of our audio listeners. We welcome you and appreciate your part in our church. And gently remind that do not call before 10.30 a.m. sharp as the service is not on. During this hour, if you happen to hear turn on and have a silent time, someone may be coming to or from the microphone. So remember that as well. Uh, after church today, there is no cookie time today, but it will begin next week. And there will be a brief deacons meeting in the Truth Seekers room. Uh, so those, uh, the treasurer can count money in the OASIS class this morning. And we, we warmly welcome all of you to the new year and to communion as well. Please take a moment to check your church mailbox when you do get downstairs for items relating to the new year. At this time, we'll quiet our hearts for the prelude. Take of symbols of both your body and blood poured out, given that we might be made new and have eternal life. It is a joy, it is a privilege to come and to worship and to know and to love you. It is our heart's desire to please you, and our prayer is that everything we say and do will raise as a pleasing aroma to your heart and to your spirit. In your name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Betty is going to lead us in hymn 122. There's a song in the air and we will rise.
we're having communion today, I need to ask, did every one of you get your little communion packet? If not, just raise your hand now, and someone will bring it to you. All right. And at this time, first Sunday of the month, we are having a children's story as children actually come up to an overwhelming. You. <laughs> but this means that all of you get to participate. So, we have a few lucky folks coming up. Come on up, kids. It's the new year, and our theme of our, of our uh, lesson today is Try Again. I'm going to ask the two of you, what were you ever told to try again doing? The rest of the children of God. What did someone tell you to try again? Ride a bicycle. Ride a bicycle. Start a car. Start a car. <laughs> Take a bath. No, a bath. Oh, math. <laughs> <laughs> Betty and I were at Reflections on Christmas Eve with another couple. And uh, you couldn't get reservations too late, so it was clothing. closing. And one of the waitresses was worn out. She said, I have tomorrow off. And she told, everyone could hear her. She said, and I'm not taking my bath tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, come on. You were going to say, you're trying again. Reading. Yes. It gets, we're, when you're, we're learning to read, and all of us are relearning to read. You have to keep doing it. And there's a rhythm and a process. Did you think of something you were told to try again? What about in sports? What's that? Yeah, if you don't make your shot, by the way, try again. For me, it was certainly tying my shoes. And for us, with our grandchildren, they'd spill water. We'd say, try again more patiently with your grandchildren than your own. That's very interesting. And saying difficult words. We're told not that, wait, that's not right. Try again. Anything good that we do, we have tried again. Now, what is something that you're good at? Something you're good at. Math. Running, <coughs> everything we have tried and tried until we get better. And remember that. And many people, many for many, it could be carpentry. We start off with those skills around the house. And for women, it could be cooking and baking. And over the years, that slowly changes. Galen. Passing your driver's test. Passing your driver's <laughs> test. That your choice. So yeah, and, uh, that is something. I was really more nervous than that. I also thought our children may say they're good at drawing and coloring and video games because they tried and tried and tried again. Our lives consist of trying again. We're trying a new year, aren't we? <laughs> We're going to try another year. This will be the third year obsessed with a global health issue. And it what holiday did we just celebrate? I don't mean Christmas. New Year's. New Year's. And Betty went shopping yesterday. We wanted pork and sour fountain. We were shocked at how many stores were closed. We should be grateful, because they should be closed. People should take a holiday. New Year's is God's reminder to us we get new starts. Everyone in the Christian journey gets a new beginning. What's something that we're going to try in the new year? Anything new you're going to try? Um, not sure. The rest of you, anything you're going to try? Bread. Skiing on a swollen knee. Skiing on a swollen knee. You're still going to go for it, aren't you? Good. 
Good for you. Be, be more forbearing. Oh, Bill says, just be more forbearing with everybody. May God help us. Uh, that gives life, doesn't it? Anybody else? Something you're going to try in the new year? Get through it. And may we all have grace to rule with this year. Uh, and I can say more. God wants to be with each of us in 2022. It is his gift to us. The scripture says, and the scripture God says, I know the plans I have for every one of you. And they're good. And they are to bless you. The past is behind. The future is all ours. There are things of each of our past, and of last year, we need to let go of. Let's ask God to help all of us follow Him forward in this new year. Dear God, starting with me, give us grace to try again, <coughs> to make new beginnings, to move forward with our hand in yours. And thank you that we are not our past, but we have new opportunities in the future and new experiences that you have planned for us. Amen. Thank you. All right, you may go back to your seats. We come out for a time of sharing of joys and concerns. I certainly will highlight some of them. We want to remember Connie Sensnick's father, who has a, a pelvis fracture in a few places, in Lancaster Rehab for a few more weeks. We want to remember our Nigerian church that knows ongoing suffering and is seeking to be gracious. Please remember Janet Work. She has been in and out of the hospital a few times with a blockage on her heart, and they're trying to treat it with medicine and stents rather than major surgery, which she will not uh, allow. Remember Gloria Kunkel, who is in effort of hospital, pneumonia, and with the virus, on oxygen, but getting better. And we thank God for that, don't we? She really is starting to turn the corner. When we, get, when we get ill, it takes time. It takes time to rest and recover. So we remember that, and we are grateful. Uh, I am truly am grateful she's making a good improvement. Any other joys and concerns? Yes, Jim. Well, my friend's on his stem cell implant is complete. And that's their grandson Connor and his stem cell implant process. And it is a process, is complete. And now may the young man truly find a new start, a new beginning in this year of healing and of better days. Amen. Let's sing number 489, Into My Heart, as our prayer song.
Help us to powerfully meet you in the everyday moments of our lives. Help us to understand, as Bill reminded us, the power of just being more forbearing, more giving, more releasing to one another, that we might have your love and grace and power just swelling up within our hearts. Help this not to be a year of fear for us. You are Lord of history and Lord of every virus. Here we are before you, making our steps to you and to your table as we begin worship in this new year. In Christ's name I pray, amen. And Betty will help us with the next song, I Heard the Bell on Christmas Day. truly live 
in the past. A little bit of it starts as a comfort, but it ultimately, if we stay there, becomes a prison. The past is a nice place to look, but it's not a viable place to live. All of us have failed in some way in the past year. For many of us, our failures are our most painful memories. We fail others. We fail ourselves. We fail God. We need God to help each of us then to press forward. The new year is a launch point and a reminder to think of how God would have us step out and step up. We will all have to press forward and to push ourselves in some area of our faith. Any movement takes pressure. We get stuck and stubborn so easily, and then we become our own worst enemy before God. Think of the area of your life in which God may be wanting you to move on. One of the most life-giving things you can do is to be honest with yourself and identify a few baby steps where you're going to release and have some movement. It costs no money, but it costs a whole lot of emotional investment. But if we don't push or press ourselves forward a little, we will all stop growing as persons. If we don't press ourselves, we will grow negative and fearful. And our circle of friends will become smaller and smaller. Jesus died on the cruel cross of Calvary so you can have the strength to press on and move forward. Also then in Colossians for the new year, we are encouraged to give up one grudge. As humans, we slowly build and solidify our grudges. They begin to, then we begin to build our whole lives around these grudges. And we get used to holding on to them. Finally, we take comfort and identity in holding our grudges. I'm being very honest this morning, Colossians 1.13 says to follow Christ, you must forbear one another. We must live with it without letting it poison our heart. Week by week, we must be forgiving one another. And it's the only way that we can receive and experience Christ's forgiveness, which we need so desperately, is by forgiving the very one we hold a grudge against. Harboring a grudge and nursing a dislike for someone always becomes self-destructive. Grudges destroy marriages, families, friendships, and entire churches. Many people get into the rut, and we get into such ruts, of going to church and actually going there with an un when you're really not really fully aware of it, you come to church to stir up resentments against others. And then the church slowly becomes kind of like a small club that only looks inward. And frankly, the outside world knows it, and they feel it when they visit. And that's the reason many will have nothing to do with the local church. The book of Job in chapter 21 describes persons who have no happiness at all, and they live and die with bitter hearts. Unforgiving spirits imprison us, not the other person. Often they merrily go on with their life. If not healed, an unforgiving spirit 
is our very death sentence. So Paul says, press forward, give up your grudge. And then third, my third point of the morning before communion is enter communion with God. Ultimately, you and I cannot escape our faith by saying, well, now I just have too many doubts, God. I can't do this Christian stuff. The author Tom Skinner says, I've spent a large part of my life trying to come to grips with my doubts. Suddenly, I realized I had better come to grips with what I believe. I have pressed forward from the agony of these questions that I cannot answer to the reality of the questions that I cannot escape. The, the, the reality is God is truth, and it's an amazing relief if we look on to the answers in God's goodness that we cannot escape. The board is preparing its retreat for the new year, and some in, a, in any church say, how can this church attract and bring in new people? But you know, there's a whole other group that will say, how can our church stay the same? How, because they, they're wise enough to know when anyone new comes, there's a change in the church. I try never even to use the word change because people are so touchy about that. But Carol Buell always reminds me, change is happening every day. It is in, um, inevitable. But he said, yep, uh, uh, we've started a new prescription plan. We were told that they had no choice. And we don't even know what the terms of it. Don't even have a prescription card yet. She said, if you need any, get them now. And it's just another aspect of change. If you and I don't experience change, we will certainly all die. So we are caught in that catch-22 of needing to deal with the stress of the world and yet yield to the changes that we cannot deny. And it is not easy. I want to read 1 Corinthians 11, verses 17 to 22. You may want to follow along. Page 1113. Every church has wrestled with change, with new beginnings, new people, with holding on to what is comfortable, and in doing this with a sense of integrity about the process of the church, which does include taking communion. First Corinthians 11, starting with verse 17. In the following directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you, and to some extent, I believe it. No doubt there have to be some differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. When you come together, it's not for the Lord's Supper you eat, for as you eat, each of you goes ahead without waiting for anyone else. One remains hungry, another gets drunk. Don't you have bones to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you for this? Certainly not. For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats and drinks of the bread and drinks the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment upon himself. This is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. <coughs> Excuse me. But if we judged ourselves, we would not come under judgment. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined, so that we will not be condemned with the world. So then, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for each other. If anyone is hungry, he should eat at home, so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when I come, I will give further directions. I know of some churches, and I'm serious when I say this, when they have their New Year's communion service, uh, they basically get together for a meditation and take 20 minutes to stop and have everyone in the room talk to each other person. You just keep mingling talking about forgiveness, asking for forgiveness, and giving it, and then taking the body and blood of the Lord to themselves. <clears throat> it sounds, um, and, and they said, typically, the service we come in the same emotional state we're in, it ends with most of the church weeping for that level of reaching out and connecting about what is important. I often think in the time of communion, we lose our way. We stop to press forward. And in every church, some people really take on the role of working against their own church and everything about the church, viewing it in a negative way. It's very sad. It's an easy rut to get into, but it crushes the spirit of communion. And on another sadder note, I'm just being very candid, there's always one person in every church that takes their role to do everything they can to run down their pastor in every way they can except in their presence. And I feel so sorry about that. And I can, I, and, and everyone ultimately knows in the church who that person is because that the pastors trust me do their own suffering. And what I can say is, for all of us here, not only this church, but other churches and pastors, wish them blessing and the best, no matter where you are or where you have been. When you come to God's table, let it all go and work and wish for the best. Paul says here, we can come to church and do more harm than good and that is sometimes a valid criticism of the world why they won't go to the local church. Paul says, and starting from the time in this, for one of the first churches started in Corinth, we come and quickly build divisions among ourselves. We believe somehow that we have more of God's approval than others in attendance. And it, and it usually comes out in words, this church needs spiritual renewal, and we all do. But that means that I'm the person that has the wisdom, uh, whoever that person is, and the others don't have that approval. Our service today is really not about bread and drink. It's about the age-old covenant every believer in Christ has. It's this. God says, I will be your Lord, and you will be my people. That is what we eat and drink to affirm today. It is a reminder of the bodily life, the flesh and blood of Jesus, the reality that he came to us to love and help and heal us, and that Jesus can relate to all that we experience. 
We can take communion in either a worthy or an unworthy manner. And the only difference is our attitude, because we all are sinners saved by grace. We are one body, and God is working out the divisions that naturally come when you have a group of people. We are all very different, but this is a time of discerning our hearts. This is a time to examine ourselves and to ask God for a new resolve to press forward and to give up grudges and to let God be Lord of his church. Now, before we have communion, I'm going to ask Cindy if she would play just a few verses of anything, song she wants, and we all take a time quietly of examining our own hearts. Maybe two verses, Cindy. <laughs> And then Jesus picked up a cup and said, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we are reminded for as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
We proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes. Let's share our printed affirmation. This cup, which we bless, is the communion of the blood of Christ. And I'm going to ask Betty to come up and join us and lead us in for our last Christmas song. Until about 11 months from now, away in the manger. Please rise, 128. <laughs> Thank you. 